again with this set of structs because the one thing we know is that the the market risk factors, uh, the, the pharma French equivalent factors, are not there for Islamic structs. So if we are going to pick out any set of Islamic structs, the first challenge would be for us to, to have the corresponding time series data on risk factors. Okay? And of course, once you have the data, it's just a matter of computing them. So we also compute the small minus big firm, uh, high minus uh, low book to market ratio, and betting against beta factors. So we have three market risk factors. The idea is that any profits you get, you should put them to a test of whether the profits you are making are due to the risk you are taking, or is it due to the mispricing of stocks. That's a central question, a fundamental question in, in empirical finance. Right? Uh, simply saying that you make profits is, is fine, but then what are the determinants of profit? So we also compute that uh, for later use in the paper. Uh, yes, so this one is the monthly data and has got 532 Islamic structs from January 1974. So much longer sample, this one. The Asia Pacific story uh, we discussed was from 1980. When you, when you look at this, uh, the US based structs, you have got a longer time series of data. And the non Islamic stocks that we take has got 5,585 stocks. So we form portfolios based on this, these stocks. Okay. So, much larger data set we're looking at, completely different sort of market. Okay, so here are the main findings uh, momentum profits of Islamic stocks over that 1974 to 2014, whatever we use, is about 10.56%. So these momentum profits are the momentum trading strategy developed and widely used in this literature. It was developed by Jagdish and Tittman. So whenever you see momentum, they are the ones who are referred to. Non-Islamic stocks, so those 5,800 uh, non-Islamic stocks, they, if you were to invest in that, you would have made as a historical investor 8.88%. So again, what you find here is very consistent to our Asia Pacific story and the previous discussion on news-based forecasting models, where the investor in Islamic stocks ends up making more profits compared to non-Islam. So this result is very consistent in, in all the stories we are telling. Right? Again, here, using a different sample size, using a different number of stocks, different time period. <coughs> we also do a number of robustness tests, like subsampling of data. Uh, we uh, take away the global financial crisis period. So all those, uh, it's a big, big paper. We do lots of other results, but I'm just showing you the main result. What we also find is that profits decline with, with size, and they are maximized for the smallest size of people. So if you were to invest, remember the question we posed, should you be investing in small size Islamic stocks or large size? The answer is yes, small size. The smallest size portfolio will give you 14.5% return. If you ignore that and just invest it randomly, you're going to get about 10.56%. Right? So you can easily make 4% per annum more profits by choosing a portfolio of small size stocks. Right? Uh, should you be, like what we have, should you be investing in low book to market or, or high book to market portfolio of stocks? What we show is that if you were to choose a low book to market portfolio, you're going to make about 17.16%. So you see how when you when you know the specifics of where you want to invest, you can maximize your profits. Right? From knowing nothing about the characteristics, you make only 10%. If you knew that by investing in the law book to market portfolio of stocks will be more profitable, you can make about 7% more profits just by you know carefully choosing your portfolio. Right? And we find that profits also increases volatility. So if you were to invest in the high volatile Islamic stocks, a portfolio of that is going to give you uh, more profits. Right. So the idea of this paper, you see what is happening? We, we, we're trying to uh, narrow it down to specific questions that, uh, that traders are interested in, that financial analysts are interested in, um, and that investors are interested in. This is the paper uh, about about answering those sort of questions, not only statistically, but also economically. About when we say economically, it means you know in terms of profits. 
And then, of course, with all these profits, we, we regress them on the risk factors to show whether there are a compensation for risk or these profits are due to mispricing, right? So we do all that. Okay, so our existing projects, so these are the projects we have already done. The existing projects, uh, we're doing three more things at present. Uh, one is the shock spillovers. So the idea is that if there's a shock that hits a, 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 the Islamic stocks, for example, do they spill over to non-Islamic stocks? And if they do, then what is the trajectory? How, how does that shock affect over what time period? And vice versa. If there's a shock to the, uh, the uh, non-Islamic stocks, is, is the, what is the speed of the spillover? So you, what we'll do is we'll end up comparing the speed. So does it take uh, uh, two months for the effect to to uh, to move from one type of stock to another, from Islamic to non-Islamic, and from Islamic to uh, from non-Islamic to Islamic? Does it take more than two months? Right. So it's about the direction and the speed. So we're trying to develop a model now which uh, would be able to capture that in a multivariate framework where you can put in uh, where you can put in all the uh, all the stocks. And, and, test and introduce uh, random shocks or, or real shocks in, into the system, which then leads to the second uh, project, which is the role of commodity prices. Because oil, for example, oil, oil pricing is quite central to Islamic stocks. Right? So we want to study how, uh, how much uh, of the pricing of Islamic stocks is due to oil prices and other commodities. Uh, and the third one here is about looking at more broadly financial and macroeconomic predictors of stock returns. So, for example, we we have at the moment no idea whether uh, uh, financial ratios like uh, cash flow to price or book to market or dividend yields would be more useful in pricing Islamic stocks compared to inflation rate, short-term interest rates, unemployment rate, economic growth. Right? So we, we don't know what is the ranking of these predictors. We, we have no idea about it. In the non-Islamic literature, the non-Islamic asset pricing literature, it has been shown that both uh, financial ratios and macroeconomic predictors matter in forecasting predictors. But whether or not that is true for uh, Islamic structures is unknown. So just because we have now developed from the previous projects nice time series data for hundreds and hundreds of stocks, uh, we are now able to run time series models of forecasting. So that's what um, that's what it's happening. The final thing which I uh, missed out putting on this slide is uh, recently uh, we have been developing. If you're working on um, uh, price discoveries, you would know that. So the idea is that if you have, um, let's say, uh, Coca-Cola. Right? It's easy to explain with Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is a company which is listed in multiple stock markets, right? from New York, London, to Australian Stock Exchange. Right? So say that Coca-Cola is listed on 10 different markets. The idea is, as an investor, you would want to know where does the price discovery take place. So where does the price change first, in which market? So all markets will not simultaneously change uh, prices. Right. The price discovery, where e does it take, uh, take uh, place first? Because once you know where the price discovery is taking place, we can trade on that market. Right. So where you have commodities that are, and there are many commodities like this, that are traded on multiple stock exchange, the idea of price discovery uh, becomes very important. The, the influential work on price discovery goes back to Hashbrook, 1995 in general of finance. Uh, his model was a VAR-based model, so where you can put, let's say Coca-Cola, the, the 10 price exchange you have, you have prices, price history on those 10 markets right, for Coca-Cola. So you just put them in a VAR model and it will be able to tell you where the price discovery takes place. Then the second model was developed by um, the Nobel laureate Granger 
uh, with Gonzalo in in 2000, in the in one of the econometrics journals. Uh, their their idea was based on um, on a um, error correction model. So we all those who work in applied econometrics would know the VAR model and the error correction model. The problem with these two models was that. Like you know the, the error correction and bar model, the more variables you put in, the more over parameterized the model becomes. What it means is that the more variables you put in, the less is the precision of the estimates. The precision of the estimates is very important for us to, because you know, a, a, a 0 0.1 difference can mean billions of dollars in the stock exchange, right? So when you talk about price discovery, the precision the accuracy with which you estimate the model is very important. In a VAR model, as soon as those who, of us who work in applied economics, we know it, we don't put 10 variables in a VAR model, right? At best, if we are using 30 years of data, we might put in four or five variables, maybe six. But anything more than five, as soon as we put in, because in a VAR model you have so many legs and, and, and so, so many parameters to be estimated, you are sacrificing the quality of the estimates that come out of our model. So these are the limitations. So what it means is that for a commodity like oil, like many other commodities, which are traded on you know, like 20, 30 different exchanges in the world, you cannot model price discovery without sacrificing the quality of the, or the precision of the estimates. So what we do uh, recently, uh, is we develop a new model, uh, econometric model for price discovery. The advantage of this model is it treats the prices as panels, as a panel data as opposed to time series. So you, you see from your classical understanding of time series versus panel data, in a time series, if, if we talk about Coca-Cola and it's listed on 10 exchanges, you'll have 10 prices, right? in a time series. You'll have 10 prices, one would be from New York Stock Exchange, London, Australia, so on. 10 different prices. If you were to make the panel, it will be one series, Coca-Cola. Right? In other words, you put one price under another you know, in a panel setting. So effectively, when you model it, it just becomes one series. So immediately from having 10 series of prices, you end up with one in a panel setting. So what we develop here is a, 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 a panel-based approach to uh, modeling price discovery. In that case, if you have a panel, it doesn't matter. If you have 100 markets, you can put 100 markets, because there will always be that one series. You talk about Coca-Cola, if it's listed on 100 different markets, you'll have a panel of 100 prices, but only one series. And that avoids a lot of what we show in the in the theory of it and the Monte Carlo simulations that it works perfectly. There is no cost involved in terms of data. So the what is the relevance to Islamic finance? Well, that's the econometrics I've just told you. You see that the the work that I just presented here. In many cases, we're dealing with the minimum we deal with is about 188 stocks. There's no way if I wanted to, if the, if the question was, and this is one reason why no research has been done on this, if the question was out of those 188 Islamic stocks, where, which stock leads the price discovery process, there's no way of finding it out because you can't model 188 stocks, 188 times series price data in a bar model, right? Or in an error correction model, you can't estimate it. It's simple as that, right? You can't estimate a model with 188 variables, is it? It's impossible, you can't do it. But this model that we have just developed, it's a panel base, you can put all those 188, it will just be one variable of 188 prices, one below another. That's the way to picture it, you have one below another. That's in one series. So you can use this model now that we have just developed to test for price discovery, regardless of you can put in those 5,000, 6,000 US stocks that we talked about. Yes, it will take the computer maybe 20 hours to run them, but uh, computationally and theoretically there's no issues in estimating that. What it will tell us, let's take the 188 stocks Asia Pacific that we talked about, it will tell us exactly which stock 
which Islamic stock is leading the price discovery process out of those 188 and it will be able to rank it from uh, the first to the last right so they can on, the way to think about this is they can only be 100 percent price discovery from zero to 100 in percentage form so of the 188 it will rank it and you if you sum the price discovery it will come to 100 so you you would know that out of the 188 